Okay, um, that looks like the end of it for you no, tonight. No. Where? St. John's. St. John's. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. John's. Look at that. Okay, number five. Quick claim for St. John's Drive, which is an extension, actually, what those new houses over there that Peter Olson is building. Yeah, this is part of Whitney Acres. Yeah. And uh, everything was built according to uh, town specs, and uh, we have a two year bond. Uh, for the road and for any damage to the curbs and one house is already built on, on St. John's extension and this is uh, the first step that once the, if you approve this then the first selectman signs the form that goes into the records in the town clerk's office okay and do we ever have do we ever have any requirements that sidewalks be built no no, no. Oh. Oh, who's no. gonna build oh. who's gonna shovel uh, I was told that's a no-no in this town. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. We're a country yeah, town. You can walk on the edge of the grass. You know, anyway. The developer pays for it. Yeah, and we have to maintain it. Thank you. Let's yeah. not go into that now, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a mo Okay. Uh, Goldblatt and Astry, any more discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, um, now we'll go to our new six, which is uh, to authorize a resolution to the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Orange. Uh, this is for the uh, Emergency Management Homeland Security uh, Performance Grant. Um, they waited till the last ring of the bell. It has to be done by the end of this month. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Yeah, make a motion. Select. <laughs> Fair and Nastry, Oakenquist, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Well, we Unanimous. <laughs> You're voting for a grant to, for, was it $3,000? It's just that you have the authority to sign the resolution. There's no money involved. Very good. All right. Yep. That's the fashion. Aye. Aye. It's a state grant. You just increased my Unanimous. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, item number seven. Thank you, gentlemen. That's all there is to it, I tried to tell you. Aren't you glad you sat there? Okay, this is... They didn't need to. Uh, this one is the bulky waste pickup. This has this started actually with the senior leadership group. Um, that might go a little slower. Uh, but pickup, maybe. Uh, this one started with the senior leadership group uh, out of last year's uh, graduates. Um, we haven't had a bulky trash pickup in town in at least seven, eight years, I guess. At least five, six, seven, uh, more than that, yeah. That's first year okay. And uh, yeah. And so uh, we've encumbered money from the uh, leftover sand and salt fund. And we have encumbered a little bit from some other public works money that was left over also from the previous budget. And uh, we're confident we can do this. And so we finally we had, uh, I think it says here, there were two bidders. And if you look, there's quite a difference between the two. One of them had just done the bulky trash pickup, I believe, in Bridgeport at the time. And uh, I think our bulky trash pickup will be a little different than a city type of bulky trash pickup. And um, uh, so we're moving ahead with it, and I met with them, and if this is approved, they will be, I think actually they're meeting with the senior leadership group. If we approve this tonight, they're meeting with them on Friday right here, and um, they will lay out all the do's and don'ts and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable and, uh, you know, all that goes with that, and they will set up a schedule of, how they're going to move through the town you know they may start all the way to the west say in you know wheelers farms derby milford and work their way across or they may you know every week it'll be another section of the community um they are requesting that um you know that when it gets publicized we ask for the pickers not to pick because it makes it more difficult because the pickers come through when the people put all their trash out and the everything gets scattered so it's uh Evidently, more more involved cleaning up everybody. You're killing so a lot of joy. Trash, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, with that said, any questions on bulky trash pickup? So moved. 
Motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there dis uh, uh, discussion? Yeah. Try again. Nastri Cazacrio, is there any discussion on this? Discussion. Yes, I knew you would. Well, I have a couple questions. Um, first of all, do we know, going back to the year 2000, which is when I believe this was done last? About 300 tons. Okay, but the quote is for 200 tons. Correct, and we've encumbered more money contemplating the 300 ton number. Okay. But, uh, you know, you ever watch World Series of Poker? <laughs> Follow me. Follow you. I just, just want to make sure we're... we're budgeting enough because one of the problems we had last time and one of the reasons this wasn't done for so long is because we found that it cost a lot more than what was originally originally uh, allocated uh, also um, that, was, that was the first question just mm -hmm. to make sure the second question is do we have restrictions on what is going to be put out or do we know yet because yeah. the, the other thing that happened last time was it was attempted at the time to say it would be for large, bulky items such as, and it was going to be metal, if I remember correctly. But anyway, no plastic. And what was happening was, in the first day, old plastic pools and plastic playscapes were all left behind, and we sent them all back to get them because there was so much of an outcry after people put it out there. Uh, so I want to make sure that we're allowing as much as people want to put out for bulky waste and that we're specific about whatever we are allowing so people understand what is allowed and what is not allowed. What I <coughs> said right at the beginning of this, if this is approved tonight, the senior leadership group that um, started this drive on this particular item and did the research uh, will be meeting with the company and they will be working out all of the do's and don'ts of what you can and what you can't and that will be in their um, publicity, uh, the newspapers. They'll use the three local newspapers, um, uh, the streamer on uh, OGAT, um, and both Ann and Karen receive the brunt of the calls on this. They will have a list of what is acceptable, what isn't, and Public Works upstairs will also have that so that anybody who gets the call can say, no, you can't put tires out. You can't put hazardous waste out. You can't put uh, propane uh, containers, that sort of thing out. Um, there will be a list of acceptables and not. Uh, predominantly, it's things like uh, furniture that are allowed. You know, bulky furniture, uh, white metal, you know, washers, dryers, that sort of thing. Uh, but the, they will work on that on Friday. Um, I believe and have that. And this will take place over the month of October. There will be a bulky trash pickup please don't call tomorrow thinking that we can give you that information they're meeting on friday next week we can probably help you with this yes uh, jim is there uh, also the possibility maybe of uh, posting this to a town uh, uh what am i looking for website the town to web the, you, know, um, my, you know the list of list of allowable it may cut down on some of the phone calls coming in very good idea that we can uh do that also because Jonathan is very good with that over at the library you get him the information and he gets it up there very quickly so that's uh, uh, very good thank you Roy um, that's all I can tell you the bulky trash will be happening and it will be in the month of October and um, I'm really I'm really glad that it's happening it was a very slow process this group worked very very hard this senior leadership group and they were very patient and at times not patient because of the municipal drag on things and finding the money. I had to work with uh, Pam Mangini on this a lot and Ed to find out where we could uh, fund this from. And it was, you know, we had to wait for things to be complete before we knew what we had. And I, I thank all of them for their patience on this one. Um, but it is another project that hasn't happened in many years. And I think the residents will be, you know, really happy. We've had a lot of feedback starting right with uh, Karen, I know you're watching. Starting right with Karen. Can't wait. Can't wait for it. So, uh, with that said, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ed, that's it for you. Judy, call your mother. He's coming home. Okay, the next one is um, we had a problem with a septic uh, system on Saddle Ridge Road. This has been an ongoing problem with a bad uh, system there and there's been uh, we don't wish to mention uh, any names it's just a residence on Saddle Ridge the attorney 
has had to work on this for six months now, plus or minus. It's been a very difficult situation, and I'll ask him to give you the update on this one. Ron, do we have a little more wire for that particular mic? That's or? okay. I'll just I'll lean forward All right. uh, and talk loud. Just as a footnote, I'm just going to... You know what? They're crossed. That's why. Uh, as a footnote, to avoid any unnecessary embarrassment, I'm not going to mention any names, and I will not again mention the name of the road, so we don't have to unnecessarily publicize uh, the location. The information is on, on record in the agenda, and if anyone in town is that interested, they can come down to town hall and look it up themselves, or go to the Superior Court and pull the, the public documents, but I don't feel it's, it's appropriate to publicize it unnecessarily. But in any event, the update is this. Back in February uh, of this year, uh, our town sanitarian received a number of complaints from a number of residents residing on this uh, road regarding the overflow of sewage and filth onto the street. Uh, the town sanitarian inspected the premises and after that inspection, the Director of Health, Dr. Zelson, issued a notice of violation to the property owner, which was received by the property owner on February 28th of 2007. Uh, that uh, notice of violation required that the property owner uh, pump out this, its, uh, her septic system on the property as often as is necessary to eliminate the overflow of the septic and to make any repairs. I think that's you. I did announce all the exits. <laughs> and to make any repairs within 30 days of the date of the receipt of the violation. <clears throat> uh, the property owner was also notified of her right to appeal the issuance of that notice of violation, which had to be filed uh, within three business days of the receipt. Uh, that appeal was never filed. On April 3rd, uh, almost two months after the issuance of the notice of violation, the town sanitarian again inspected the premises, and despite the order of the, uh, uh, the, the, the notice of violation, uh, the defendant had not taken any actions to remediate the issue, and sewage and filth continued to flow onto the street. The uh, town sanitarian then contacted me, uh, and uh, I, on April 17th, sought an ex parte temporary injunction in the Superior Court, which was granted, uh, which was then set down for a hearing uh, later that uh, month. On, let me get the exact date. Maybe it's the exact date is unnecessary. I, what I did on behalf of the town uh, with uh, discussion with the town sanitarian is entered into a stipulation with uh, actually on April 27th of 2007 we entered into a stipulation with the property owner whereby the property owner agreed to take the remedial steps necessary to uh, correct the and repair the septic system uh, and to continue to or to begin pumping the septic system as often as is necessary to prevent the filth from overflowing onto the property. Uh, that stipulation, notwithstanding that stipulation, the property owner failed to take any action, and we continue to receive complaints from the, uh, uh, the surrounding neighbors. Uh, the matter was continued in court from month to month for a period of time. The town bent over backwards to uh, try to accommodate this property owner, uh, understanding that there were financial restrictions, or at least being told that there were pro uh, financial restrictions that the defendant was dealing with and uh, so in, a, in an accommodation we did not press our injunction although we had our ex parte injunction that was granted we did not press the hearing uh, as an accommodation however uh, in September after giving the property owner some several almost five months from the date that we instituted the legal proceeding to accommodate the matter and seeing that there was no action taken we felt that it was uh, we had no option but to proceed with court, so at that time I reclaimed the matter. Also feeling the frustration of uh, of, of not having a, an agreement that I had entered into with the property owner being adhered to, I got the building inspector involved, and the building ins I had the building inspector issue a uh, a condemnation of the property because the property was no longer being serviced by a septic system that was capable of servicing. Uh, the discharge from the property and he issued that uh, I believe you have a copy in your packet I believe it's on uh, September 4th he issued that uh, condemnation letter 
and as a result of that condemnation letter, the property owner uh, vacated the, the subject premises and, uh, and left. And it's uh, my understanding from communication with some of the surrounding neighbors, uh, the property owner sent a letter of apology to the neighbors saying that they were trying to resolve the matter, but they could not afford to correct it. Following the issuance of that letter, uh, I went to court, had a hearing, and the court ordered that uh, order an, an injunction be put in place preventing the use of the septic, which means that there uh, cannot be any use of any water on the premises that would result in a discharge into the system. Uh, and uh, in the event that the property owner uh, violates that injunction order, it's uh, she faces a $250 per day charge, which I can seek retroactive to the date of the notice of violation. So the issue now is the town and uh, building inspector has the authority under the building code to order, uh, uh, to take steps to remediate the problem himself and then bill back uh, to the property owner the, uh, the expense. My concern, I told the building inspector to hold off because uh, the repairing a septic is not any small undertaking. Uh, I, I suspect that, particularly in light of the design of this, where there's uh, a tank in the front of the property, uh, but and the leaching fields in the rear of the property, there's a pump system involved. Having gone through or septic repair myself earlier this year, I, I guesstimate that this is going to be a fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollar expense. Uh, that's well, that part of it's done already. Part of it is oh. is done already, right. uh, and I wouldn't uh, want the building inspector to, inc to incur that without the authority of this board. Uh, and uh, so everything right now is held in abeyance. My understanding that the property is vacant. So it's what's questions, comments, concerns. Well, the reason for this, hold on, hold on, hold on. And the reason for this uh, <coughs> makes us giggle a little bit about the authority of. This one is uh, questionable because it's going to end up with our authority. This will become illegal again. It's not just going out to buy a new Taurus. Um, it's. Uh, you know, we'll put a lien on a property if we go this route, and uh, you know, so it becomes a legal situation. So, on top of incurring the cost of uh, uh, the completion of this system, you're in also incurring uh, legal cost here. Um, just so you're aware, I mean, so that number is actually greater than that stated. Uh, Joe, first, I guess, wait. <coughs> The question I have, I understand the property is vacated. Uh, what happens in the event uh, that uh, this particular house should go on a foreclosure? Uh, in other words, they completely walk away from it. Um, so do we go ahead and, and do the system now uh, and uh, bring the bill up higher, or do we wait until someone buys that piece of property in foreclosure and before, uh, uh, I guess, a realtor would have to tell the person buying that property that it needs a septic system, hasn't been approved by the town. Um, I'm not quite sure where the cart comes before the horse here um, on, right. on something like that. There the, are the two issues there. Well, obviously, to the extent that the septic system is repaired, you're enhancing the value of the property. The town would put a lien on the property, which would be subordinate and right to any uh, s senior encumbrances. Unlike a tax, which would have a super priority, this would be a junior lien holder to any first or second or third mortgages that may already exist. So maybe an analysis of the uh, of the land records would be suggested first to see what would our priority be. Clearly, this would, is not a tax; it would just be a subordinate lien. So that being said, in the event of a foreclosure, should the town do this undertaking, which might then be followed by a foreclosure. If the value of the property is less than the total encumbrances on the property, any encumbrance that is beyond the value would be lost at foreclosure. So potentially... In other words, it, we don't get the money? In other words, you would lose out on getting the money. Yeah. He makes a long story out of a short Okay. Uh, that's, why he's, that's why the clock is ticking. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, not tonight. No. But in any event, that, uh, so yes, you do run the risk of if a foreclosure happens, you lose your lien. The question on that is, is uh, if, if there is a foreclosure and the town takes control of the property, then the town has the right to sell the property after the... No, no, no. The foreclosure no, no. might be by their mortgage holders. Oh, I see. The mortgage holders. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, there are a couple scenarios. Obviously, the town puts a lien on the property and waits uh, a day, a year, or 10 years uh, and says, okay, we want a foreclosure. The town would have a right of foreclosure on its lien as well. However, if the town foreclosed, it would take the property subject to any senior liens, which wouldn't make much sense. You don't want to start paying a mortgage. Yes. Uh, Roy, Mitch, want to duke it out? Do, is, is there any, with the house occupied, is there currently a health hazard risk? No, water's not being There's used. There's nothing. Right. Ha, has there been any com communication with the property owner yes. uh, recently as to we know what their intent, are they? It's, it's having spoken with their council, and they are represented, uh, their council within the last two weeks. Uh, they, they purchased the property with the intention of residing there. They want to live there. Uh, they have fallen on financial difficulties, according to council, and they're unable to afford the repair at this time. They relocated to uh, a property in Milford, uh, it's my understanding, and it's their intention one at one time to repair the property uh, and move back. But at this time, they say they simply can't afford it. They have another house in Milford is where they're living. Okay. It seems, you know, my my take on it would be that if that's the intent and it's a good faith uh, attempt on their part to at some point come into this and there's no health hazard, uh, that maybe we should, even if we set some kind of time frame to to allow this to begin or, or uh, uh, get some information th from them as to what, how long they intend to take doing this. You know, not that it doesn't go on 10 years. They've, But they've been playing this along for, like I said, six months roughly already. Um, but there was an active health hazard during that six months. Yes, it was. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is if there's no current active health hazard and it's their intent in the next six months or a year to do this work and then move back in, my take would be to leave it lay uh, for us to let it right. go at this point and not start something that's going to incur uh, uh, engineering and, and building costs and then legal costs as well. Right. And just, just on that, that point, uh, in speaking with uh, Dr. Nelson and uh, the town sanitarian, Fred Schumacher, and I, I say this, this is what I've been told, because obviously from the perspective of the surrounding uh, residents, you know, it's a health hazard. They, they, some residents have to actually walk through when there was an overflow, a flow, flowing uh, sewage uh, in order to, or effluent, in order to get to their mailbox. They did not, uh, the, the town sanitarian and Dr. Nelson did not consider this a health Zelson. hazard. Zelson, I'm sorry. Z. Z. Uh, did not consider this a health hazard, rather a nuisance. Uh, and it may be, even though there's no actual fl flow, there may, the nuisance essentially, and what I've heard from the neighbors, they go outside to garden, do whatever, and there's the smell that's, that you get when there, you have a problem with a septic. So is Does that, that persist now? I haven't been out there. I've seen it as of August, the end of August, the beginning of September, and there was flow at that time. Whether now that it hasn't been used for three weeks, whether that has now dried up and the smell has dissipated, I don't know, but I think the ongoing problem has been more of the nuisance value as opposed to the health hazard. It will dry up some. It will go, the water level will drop below the discharge pipe so that you won't get the flowing out where it broke out of the ground and you, yeah. that'll eliminate that part of it. But you have to be cautious because uh, you don't want them coming back into that house saying even they're doing work and you know they're in the house they're going to use the you know the water and you start using water it brings the water level up water flows out the discharge pipe again and you have water breaking out of the ground which brings another question uh, Ben, is the property being taken care of while well, there's no one there or is it going into i mean is the lawn being mowed and you know i mean you know, the property the neighbors are going to be up in arms if the property is going to let go because it's going to lower their values if yeah, I have no knowledge on okay. the what the maintenance of the property is. Question, Mitchell. Yeah, um, I haven't been out there for a couple of weeks. I was alerted by a couple of the neighbors, um, but about a couple of weeks ago, and I think this was about the same time that they vacated, 
there was a piece of equipment on the property that was, for lack of a better term, precariously perched and looked like it might be in a, a you know, could on the, on the hill there um, lose its balance. There was also an open area that had been excavated. So my question is, I don't think we should, unless other, everybody else could convince me otherwise, I don't think we should get into the septic repair business here. But I am concerned about a potential safety problem on, on the property, uh, both in terms of um, whether that equipment is still there, and number two, whether we have an open pit similar to a swimming pool without a, a fence around it. I mean, is there some remediation that the town could or should take to make sure we don't have a, a safety problem? Because we are aware of a situation. We are aware they vacated. Um, and should we at least get a fence around that or somehow cover it up? I, um, I, I just yeah. raise those questions. Yeah, I don't, since it's private property, the town doesn't have the, the town has the ability under the building code to go in and make this repair because that the building code provides it. Right. There's no authority. For there's safety? Not, there's not a swimming pool there. We could check with the building inspector whether or not if there's approved construction, i.e. The, mm -hmm. the septic repair has been permitted and approved. And if there's equipment that is perched on property that is in an unsafe condition, whether or not he has the authority yeah. to do anything, and I can check with him tomorrow. Okay. But uh, unlike, where, you know, if there were a swimming pool that was unfenced and you can, you know, start issuing fines or things of that nature, I'm unaware of, okay. of anything at this point. But see, I guess I'm more concerned right now of a safety issue than sure. I am of the, the situation. Also, I'm not sure, Jim, because I don't know this, you know, if you leave the, the pit open and we get some heavy rain, Will that bring the levels back up and also bring the, the odors back up I, again? And I, I don't know which what the pit is that's yeah, open. I mean, I've, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I was under the impression from the sanitarian that the trench work and all had been done. Okay. Um, the next part was that they hadn't done or were waiting to have done, you know, as they could you know, afford was the, the tank itself. Yeah, it was that just in the front of the house, and I think the way you described it, it's probably be, a tank Well, then that area. might be, uh, it's either going to be a hole for the tank yeah, uh, maybe. or to remove. There may be a tank in that hole. You may only have, you know, a very small amount of uh, uh, depth to top of the okay. tank, which isn't a problem, <clears throat> or it could be the pit for the pump station uh, part of it. It's one or the other. Um, I was led to believe that it's the tank and the machine that they have there isn't big enough to set a tank properly. But most of the times when you do that, the companies that you buy the tank from, um, unless you're not ready, they back in with the truck and they set the tank uh, okay. for you. So uh, nonetheless, they have a house for sale in Milford and they have a house in Orange and uh, uh, Sooner or later, house for sale in, in, in Milford. That's what we've been led to believe. Correct. Well, they own one in Milford, in other words. Yes, they do. Except in this market, uh, <laughs> they still have it. You know, it's a difficult market. Uh, a question. I'm curious. No, I, I don't think we have enough. Of it. Joe, first. We'll go down the line. Question uh, on uh, um, uh, the water has been shut off. Is, is, is that what you said? There's no water in the building? In other words, uh, my point is, uh, who shut the water up? The water company? Did no. the town have to go in and tell the water to, to the shut off at the street? The water, the water hasn't been shut off. The occupants not permitted to discharge water. They're not so, using water in the house. Right. So presumably there's still oh, the ability to turn on a faucet. Or uh, okay. Really. That, that's where I was misunderstanding you. They could, uh, uh, anybody could go in on, uh, on that weekend and... Uh, uh, well, no, or they could still use the water right. then. Know it, know it oh. Now knowing that the property is vacant, someone could, you know, kids, whoever could go could yeah, break into could the house and start flushing the toilets or yeah. turn on the, the faucet and leave or whatever. Uh, and, you know, now you'll have all this flow of water coming into but the But the water can be shut off. If yes, that's what I thought it would. But that's is, is, said, is, the is it city water or, water or is it well water? water? Yeah, that street there would be city, city, city water. water, city water. water. Yeah. Well, that, that, see, that's, that's, my, that's, that's what I was leading to. Does the town have to... Uh, do we have to say to the water company that you, you go in and you shut these sub water supply like you didn't have to pay your bill and then do we have to have that the, the, uh, the front cover welded down uh, because anybody could uh, want one of these if you ever see that you Jimmy you must know the big pipe that goes down there and turns oh, the, yeah, the main the off big wrench thing. that big yeah. wrench anybody go get a, one hey, of those sir. so I'm not sure whether 
the water, if it came to the point that the water had to be shut off, uh, is that is that something the town has to issue uh, something uh, to the, uh, the water authority? The the court never ordered that the water to the property be shut off. Simply that the property owner not discharge water. The the property owner is the one who is exposed for the liability and should take appropriate steps to protect against things occurring. It's I don't find it the obligation of the town to be concerned about, well, how are we going to prevent water from going out? That's not our concern. The only issue is now that the building inspector is involved, he has the authority to make a repair and that I said don't do until you have input from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, and if what I'm understand what I'm hearing, well, the outcome will be, there will be no action directed uh, and it will ultimately be up to the property owner where it appropriately lies to make the repair when the property owner can afford it. And if the property owner can't afford it, the property owner will have to either sell the property at a price that could, could yeah. provide as is, or let it go into foreclosure. Well, we don't even know how, how many liens there are on the property, uh, what the it's mortgage is. We really don't have enough information to make a decision on this. If the, there may be tax liens, yeah. And uh, we don't know about the, uh, uh, the dangers that's been brought up by, uh, by this board. Uh, is there a... Uh, open trenches, can kids get hurt, and that kind of thing. I don't think we can make a decision based on that. Okay, right. All I was going to say, Jim, was that if there were issues of health or safety or, or even nuisance, I'd be in favor of us moving forward uh, without having those definitive uh, items. I, I, I don't think we should do it at this point. All right, so, it, all right, so at this but point... Perhaps we should revisit it if there's no action in over a certain October. Well, we can have the answers for you for all those things at October meeting. All right, so no action taken at this time. It will be revisited at the October meeting. Maybe the family will uh, uh, do something in the meantime also. All right, but they still are. Everybody's in agreement that there's no occupancy of the house, no use of the property, you know, the house. Okay. All right. Item number uh, whatever it ended up. Seven. Seven. No, it'll be nine, 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 nine now. Nine, yeah. Nine. The old Tavern Road Pond update. There's a couple things on here I put on for everybody, so you know where I am and what I'm doing at the moment. Um, there's a pond down at Old Tavern Road Recreation Area. Um, when I was much younger, it was a pond where we skated and fished, and uh, it was all part of that program down there. Um, matter of fact, even I think the Exchange Club when we were kids used to do a fishing derby there, and it was brought to my attention that uh, you know some of the other, possibly one of the other civic organizations in town that exists at this point in time would be interested in uh, doing that again. So we did some research on it, and believe it or not, it's a age restricted pond to age uh, 62 or over. I mean, 16 or under. Um, uh, in, re in, in, in regards to uh, fishing, and it's kind of it has a connection to the state of Connecticut. Uh, uh, back to William Knight had uh, deeded some sort of control of this pond, as far as a fishing pond, to the state of Connecticut. Scott Allen found, and um, so I had the park and rec guys. I was concerned about it. Uh, any of you have been down there have small children the brush had grown three-quarters of the way around the front of it and uh, you know if parents were watching one of their children in a ball game and there's another small child around could end it up in this pond and you would never have been able to find them with the willows had grown all the way around it and all so with a joint effort between our highway department and uh, park and rec crew they've cut a lot of the brush back pretty much all the way around so the brush is only on the back side of it at this point uh, possibly with time we'll remove uh, that also and again when we were young there was very little brush around it you could fish all the way around it skate all the way around it and uh, no problems and then uh, after they had done this there were uh, eight or ten of those blue barrels that we use for trash barrels in the pond so they had to get the blue barrels out we all thought they were floating. Well, we found out that they weren't floating. Uh, they tried to get them out. They couldn't get in there good enough. So uh, one of our public works uh, 
employees took the backhoe, which is a four-wheel drive back uh, backhoe, and to uh, see how they could do. Well, lo and behold, they drove clear across the pond from the parking lot to the other side. It's all silted into a depth where this much of the front tires was not underwater. So the depth of the water in there is only about like this. There's hardly any water in it at all. Um, so to support the fishing derby, uh, or skating even, um, I think, uh, and that would also take some of the burden off of Wright's Pond. Uh, the poles are still there. There used to be lights on it when I was, uh, again, young. And uh, so we started talking about it a little bit, and that whole site was built originally uh, by the operating engineers as a training ground when it first started. Uh, um, Tony Marquito and uh, oh, Sherm Kramer, and there was a whole bunch of them. They were kind of the guiding force. I know those two names uh, uh, are two that I remember, and I apologize to anybody at home who was involved in that. I don't know all the names. <laughs> Um, but they got the operating engineers in there and it was a testing and training area. So I spoke with the operating engineers and uh, uh, told them this and they're willing to help us out uh, with the digging of, you know, cleaning out of this pond, uh, excavating it out and we're going to take the excavated material out and it, for minimal cost. I mean some fuel and uh, you know, uh, some incidentals that may be required. We have to do some silt and hay bale work at one end so they can uh, lower the water table in there. And, uh, uh, you know, so we have to do that sort of thing. And uh, But minimal, minimal, minimal cost to the uh, town of Orange. And it will create uh, another area for skating. And possibly if I can get one of the civic organizations interested in doing the fishing derby situation again, uh, that will happen. Uh, the material will be excavated. I'm predicting it's mostly uh, gr very gritty, gravelly material in there. Um, stockpiled on that lower parking lot there so it drains. And um, it will be quite a benefit to the community and to Park and Rec. Don McGinnis and I have talked about it quite a bit, and we're all on board with that. And then that ties into my next one, Surrey Drive. So if you have any questions about the pond one first, and then I'll go to the next one. Go ahead. Yeah, on the pond one, uh, it sounds like it's necessary. It needed to be done. Two, two questions. One is, does this or has this gone to the Wetlands Commission for their... Yes. It has gone to Wetlands, and it has gotten approval. Okay. I have my permission and my permit and okay. everything on that. Good. Yep. And the, se the second question was, after the silt material that's withdrawn from, or excavated from this area has been... Um, placed on the parking area and dry, then what? That goes to uh, the next item on, okay. the, on the agenda. All right. So it's going to be minimal cost to get this pond redone and used for a uh, public benefit for fishing and uh, um, skating and all. And I hope that once I get this part of it done, I'm going to try to talk with, uh, uh, I think her name's Judy from UI would light the night and we may light that pond uh, or put timer lights on it somehow so the kids can... Uh, do some skating there. Then that goes to my next one, which is the update for the Surrey Drive flooding. We met with the Conservation Commission and some wetland uh, representatives also. This also has gone before wetland. We have approval from them. Um, the Wepawag is the f one of the many parts of this repair down there in this Surrey Drive problem. Uh, part of it, if you look on old maps, it looks like at one point in time the Wepawag went this way instead of taking a right and going down around this way. Well, there's a low area there between two ledges. Um, we need to build a berm. What happened was the water came up out of the brook and went south through this area between these two ledges and um, down through uh, what was Johnny Cowell's property and Surrey Drive, and that was the other water that came into Surrey Drive, not the Racebrook water from behind the other houses. So I said, where on earth am I going to get enough material to build this berm? And the Conservation Commission is very concerned. They want to make sure there's no uh, um, hazardous material or anything. So we couldn't just take in, you know, dumpings from anywhere. We couldn't take in asphalt and bad fill. Well, lo and behold, 
I came up with the dredge in the pond. The material is dry from the pond. Our public works department will transport that to the Wepawag Conservation Area, the Howard Brooks Conservation Area. Uh, and as I get all the approvals in place with conservation so they understand, I mean, we do control that, even though it falls under, you know, the Conservation Commission is an arm of the town. Um, I have my, I will have my material to build the berm between these two ledges to force the water if it comes up out of the brook. It seems to be a problem when we get four to six inches or more of water. There'll be a berm across there which will force the water to the west and back into the brook. There's some work that has to be done in the brook as well. A lot of gravel and stone has washed down there and there's some dead trees and all that also have to be removed right in the Wepawag down to um, where it joins with the race brook. So we have some other work to do there. But so that's where the fill material Mitchell dug from Old Tavern Pond is going to build a berm for the Surrey Drive flooding. I got one going with the other. We got two benefits out of the deal. I was scratching my head and winding my watch trying to figure out uh, how I was going to come up with this fill and this was how I figured out I could come up with it. Uh, both with minimal cost to the taxpayers of the town of Orange. Power line update. Uh, Selectman Cusacrio and I had a little discussion on this. Oh, yes, go ahead. Any questions on Surrey Drive? Let's say uh, all the fill comes out of Old mm -hmm. Tavern and you build your berm. Will that solve the problem for all the homeowners on Surrey? No. Nope. Just uh, probably two or three houses? That'll take care of part of the water flowing into that neighborhood. Uh, part of, okay. Part of the water. The, the big, a big part of the water in that neighborhood that caused the blockage of the road was this water. Came across and hit it up towards the beginning. The water that came from through the backyards and all, Mr. Murphy and your friend and um, Dr. Messina, that's the race brook. That's behind them. Um, so if we can take care of the water that's coming through that was in... Um, Oliver, Aspen, uh, Luddy, a couple others in there, I, the name slipped me. But this was the water coming from the Wepawag that came through and was flowing down the street that blocked that. Water came from the Race Brook behind uh, the other people, Murphy and your friend Fred and them. Some of that did come up into the street also, but it was a conversion of the two, and the storm drain system is silted in and all. One of the next things I have to look at over there, and I started looking at the maps uh, last week, actually, is where the Race Brook joins the Wepawag. Has silted in, you all witnessed it, most of you witnessed it, has sil silted in and brushed in. We need to excavate and open up that area. I think it can be done on the maps, it can be done from the conservation area. I'm not 110% sure. Um, but that also has to be opened up so that water can get through there. The problem is it's too restricted at the end where it meets the Wepawag, and it can't get through there. Plus, if you look, if you stop on Mapledale Road and you look in the Race Brook right there over the bridge, um, there's a lot of grit and gravel and stone that has built up there since that construction was done, and that's bringing up the bottom of the river is actually coming up because you're filling in with stone and grit material so we need to excavate some of that out as well um, so that's my Surrey Drive update of the month that yes. um, I was going to say that that whole area f with the problems from the race brook the grades are all dead flat in there too yeah, and any little bit of backup just keeps backing it's up. It's a complete floodplain right much. in there which probably under today's regulations some of that you couldn't build on you know you just couldn't uh, Okay, power line update. Uh, they have pretty much completed their devastation of phase one, I'll call it, of this uh, process through the town. Um, we all see it every day. And they're now starting to move the crane pads from left to right. After they do that, the next I met with two residents uh, this morning that had a little altercation with one of the uh, uh, subcontractor representatives yesterday. 
After they do that, the next thing that will happen when they're ready, once they get all the pads moved there, the wires will be coming down for the other set of wood poles that are on the wood poles and possibly the lattice tower structures as well because they can't drill for the next towers until that's out of the way because when the mast goes up for the drill, it's in the wire, so they, they can't do that. So that's how you know what will be going on with that. They started remediation on what we call the south side of it. If you were headed this way, headed down Orange Center, and so far they have not done a <coughs> very good job with uh, some of their remediation. Um, and we've spoken with them already about that and they're working to improve that um, because we told them, you know, some of these people had beautiful yards or very private property there, not necessarily manicured, but nonetheless private. And, uh, you know, it needs to be put back in an order now that they've cut and snipped and ground up and exposed everything, at least make this into an area that looks presentable. If there's stones and sticks and stumps and mess there, you can't just go drive over it, backblade it with a loader and uh, throw some seed on it. That's just not acceptable to us. And uh, um, they've put two new people on the job uh, in uh, with the long hair was removed from this job and they put two new people on it. And uh, they're doing pretty good. Um, they've, they've been right on it. When I had this problem, when I received a call yesterday from very irate uh, resident had a problem with the contractor I called up Frank Pyro and uh, he got right on it he called the residents up and then he called me back probably 530 last night um, to let me know what was happening and uh, so they are much more uh, receptive in regards to that um, but they are moving the crane pads now and they then will take down wire and then they will be drilling the next round of uh, foundations um, so I know it will begin again point uh, with this that's interesting also myself and the town attorney mostly myself uh, were in negotiations with them they wanted to write away from us which you all know um, and we denied it as a group they requested uh, to meet with us they met with myself and the town attorney and the wetlands officer and I really didn't want to give them that right away that we all discussed through our Racebrook track property. So I gave them three options. I asked them for about a million and a half dollars or an adjoining 130 acres that the water company still owns or a parcel of about 22 acres that adjoins a piece of open space that we purchased. They wanted to work and they called and anything will just tell us come up with a lower figure. I said no, we gave you our offers and um, you know, you come to us with what you want to offer. And I called Woodbridge. They either needed Woodbridge or they needed Orange to get to where they had to get to. So Woodbridge, I talked to the first selectman there, and they asked 800000 almost a million, uh, for theirs for the buy this next piece of the Racebrook tract. Well, lo and behold, Woodbridge folded and sold them a right-of-way for 400000 and they're going to repair the road that they're using off of... Uh, Johnson Road, I think it's Clearview, Clearbrook, Clear something over there that goes in. But, again, we really didn't want them in there. You say, well, a million dollars, you know, would have been nice. We really didn't want them in there. Any of you who want to see what we avoided, go for a walk at the Racebrook Tract, and you'll know when you leave Orange and enter Woodbridge, because I had residents coming to me. They thought that we gave them a right away, not knowing that it's Woodbridge's property to ours. They did in there what they did in people's backyards all along this thing as well. And um, I'm still not sure if that was allowable by their DEP uh, uh, land acquisition watershed grant, um, if that's allowable. And um, it's much different than what was there prior and I am um, a little upset about it quite honestly uh, but they needed an access from one of us and so Woodbridge uh, sold out you know so those are updates on those if I can answer any more questions no okay 
Next one. Disposal of the old voting machines. This is very interesting. Uh, our registrars had given me a list of some people that were interested in half a dozen machines. I think we own 12 or 13 machines. Um, some communities have sold their machines to other places where they still use the lever voting machines. Um, I'm getting pressure because our CERT organization and some others would like that space to store uh, cots and canned goods, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Stuff for uh, emergency disaster. Um, do we want to try to market like the the newer machines, the big I'll call them blue. They're kind of the aqua color machines. Are you know a, a newer batch of machines, and I need to know, you know, do you guys want to sell these? Do you want to send them to uh, metal management? Do you want to uh, uh, put them in a auction? Do you want to uh, receive sealed bids? Do you want to put them on eBay? Um, there is one machine that the town certainly will retain. Um, it's probably the oldest one we own. It still has a tag on it that it was purchased by Arnold Hine when he was first selectman. I mean, that goes back to like the 40s, maybe 1950 at, the, at, at most. Um, I would like to retain the oldest machine, and we have plenty of space here. It can go in the town clerk's office as a dust collector or in the vault, and um, you know, but I will be retaining the oldest machine uh, for the town of Orange for certain. I asked the Historical Society several times. They do not want it. No, no. no interest. Which is okay. That's fine. Um, but we will retain that. But the question is what to do with the other dozen or so machines. Um, thoughts? Yeah, one, one thought. Um, and, and you know we're all going to be changing the way we vote very shortly I'm not sure if it serves a purpose or not but I'd like us to at least broach the idea to see if any of the elementary schools, the middle school the high school would like to use them for election purposes I mean it's going to be strange to use them because it's not the kind we'll be using going forward but there may be an interest in having one that's, at each school that's two of the machines there was that interest in that direction okay. Okay. So you still have 10. Well, I, I didn't think it was going to get rid of all of them. The rest, Jim, I don't know. I mean, what, I mean have, you, what have you heard other towns are doing? I mean, Some I, places have sold them. Karen said today somebody sold theirs to Europe. Yeah. I mean. Woodbridge, uh, Woodbridge sent theirs to the dump tomorrow. Well, yeah, they also sold their right away for half price. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I mean, if you want me to explore this as to what others are doing with these, I mean, it's not. they have a value? If there is a value, if there is interest out there, I mean, like I said, we can put them on eBay and see if we get a bid. I mean, uh, there's people out there to buy everything. Uh, Lord knows, go to Mitchell's basement. <laughs> <laughs> They're good tax sale uh, <laughs> items at Mitchell. You have all <laughs> political stuff. You need one of these, Mitch. I don't know what Abby will say, but you need one. You know, it's funny you say that. I already asked, and she uh, she said no. <laughs> Besides the fact that they are, for those that don't know, <laughs> these machines are so heavy. They are heavy. And they are not easy to maneuver. Even maneuvering the one into town hall gym is going to be a struggle. But that's easier with the elevator, at least. Yeah. Um, you know, so if anybody want, I, I would say, you know, if anybody out there is interested, they should contact the town hall first to see if we have any interest within the town for whatever reason. We can decide whether, they, whether to either, either sell them or give them away if there's enough interest or not. Um, but I can warn people, they are extremely, I don't know the weight, but extremely They heavy. are, especially those big blue ones. 50 column. Yeah. Um, so there should right. be a scrap value then. Well, I think there's more than that. I think there's more than a scrap value to these. I truly do. And uh, I'll explore it further. Carmela asked me, was she in today or yesterday? Wanted to know what we were going to do with them. And I said, we're going to talk about it at the meeting tonight. And... Uh, I'll explore it. I'll look into it and find out what other communities have done. But um, don't put them off for bulky waste. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you that you see the people pushing them in the back of those little t mini pickups and stuff, trying to get them to the to the junkie man. 
All right, so that's uh, I'll look into that and see if I can come up with an answer for you for next month. We are going to the optic uh, scan machines. Uh, the town clerk and I have been working on this, uh, the registrars as well, and uh, Ann sent out a letter yesterday, today, went to uh, both party chairman, vice chairman, uh, myself, Pat, the registrars. We're going to have a, a, a meeting on Tuesday night uh, for plan of attack as how to uh, market two different groups and people the optic scan type of voting uh, we'd like to set one up in the town clerk's office to have it available for people to uh, view and try um, Pat is willing to go on the road uh, to like the different civ civic organizations and senior center and that sort of thing um, to get exposure to these machines because we did hear of some some have some people sailed through these primaries a week or two ago no problem and others had a lot of problems is there possibly a you know a disc available from the manufacturer or something that could be run uh, through one. you have no. yeah never mind yeah. i haven't been paying much, yeah. much <laughs> attention apparently <laughs> you've been busy you were in hawaii um <laughs> yeah so uh so that's what the story is there. We're working on that, and there is a meeting on uh, uh, Tuesday night. Um, you, as selectmen, you are. I will welcome any of you to come if you want to uh, have input into this. Like I said, we invited the party chairman and vice chairman and um, selectmen. Well, where, where and what time is the meeting, Secretaries. Jim? It's going to be here at 7.30. Yeah, in the small room, because this will be either wetlands or zoning, whichever okay. is falling on Tuesday night. night yeah if you think you're gonna have a quorum you might post it oh it's a meeting by chance come on <laughs> we're not here to discuss selectman business at that it's gonna be it's for the voting right, I know he is I know that's why he's the attorney um, but anyhow so that's uh, that's what the story he's such a he takes all the fun out of the oh, things no, it's, it's um, <laughs> so that's uh, all that I have for you at the moment Well, we haven't got to it yet. I'm just on all of my little topics here. Yeah, okay, I know. I know. I can't help you. Um, number 13 is the tax refunds. Uh, you see, now this is generated really because of uh, when people get their tax bills, it kind of prompts people to uh, straighten out and correct and stuff. You don't have to. It's only one item on there. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, so this is what causes uh, tax bills uh, to be there. We have a motion on that. So moved. Thank you. Is there a approve the tax refunds in the amount of eight thousand three hundred and seventy two dollars and fifty three cents. Very good. A second on that? Select Mincuzza Creo. Any more discussion on that? Vote on that. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. I know. One abstention. I know. You don't have to, though, but well, you can. Let me see that. It's for the car that you blew the head on. Okay, committee reports. Um, High Plains Community Center renovation, Selectman Blake. Uh, the only thing I have to report on that is we are coming very close to um, adopting the design for the windows on the... Uh, in the cafeteria and the kitchen yes the second thing I have to report is that we we received one bid uh, for the uh, refrigerator new refrigeration and all that that goes with it for the kitchen only one bid came in it was higher than what they anticipated and the outfit was from New York so they were going back to out rebid it again and I think so far so I Ed told me today he believes three other people now are interested in the uh, in the bid process. This is a that. big company in Wallingford, I would have thought would have been. Well, that. It, from what I understand, the company in Wallingford was the one that told Ed just about what a, uh, a, guest, a guesstimate price would be, but for some reason they didn't bid on it, and uh, Ed, Ed was going to get in contact with them. So maybe now they're one of the three they're that, big outfit. that are fine. Yeah, uh, they are very I big. Know, use them. And it was surprised. We were surprised that only one bid came in, and that was a New York outfit. 
Okay. Um, what's next? School buildings, Selectman Cusacrio. Uh, Jim, things are pretty well wrapped up. We're waiting for the remainder of the work to be completed. I believe in October, uh, the uh, windows replacement, and uh, uh, it's going to be done one classroom at a time and they'll move one classroom out apparently they can do one classroom a day so they won't disrupt the the uh, teaching schedules by uh, but that one day each class and uh, we expect that to be done in the next five or six weeks complete okay I uh, so, go, I don't know Mitch maybe we we're both going to touch on the same thing about the bonding no okay Go ahead. You go for it. Well, you know, Roy, is there still any possibility of moving the fence at, I know it's your business, um, at, at Penn Place School to expand the parking, which just continues to get worse as the days go on? There, there's still discussion about that. And it remains to be seen how much money is left uh, at the end of things. They, they really need to uh, put a parking lot there like I'm going to, you may be hearing from me on next month. Uh, at the community center out in the front island there there's going to be a, a, a parking lot proposal i'm going to bring you at high plains and they need to do the same thing there really Tur like turkey hill it'll end up but but as bad as high plains is and we all recognize something needs to be done That's there way worse peck you've got people on the street constantly yeah constantly on on the street itself so yeah there's uh they need to figure that in that should probably be a capital improvement for them next uh, year the school should really enter that uh, as a, something that we need to do uh, that is a huge issue down at Peck um, but I was going to say with the school building thing I was at Board of Finance Monday night and Amity is actually bonding borrowing some money they're not bonding money they're borrowing money because there's uh, the hold up with the uh, bonding of projects of of the bonding State. in Hartford yeah the legislator and the governor I guess are duking it out again and there's been a hold up in the, some of the bonding uh, at the state level which then frees money for school projects and other uh, areas um, uh, within the state where you know where money is doled out and so Amity is actually borrowing money right now until they receive uh, some of their promised money for their construction projects to uh, they're borrowing some money for th 90 days right now uh, which is a concern uh, it is a concern uh, Jim I'm just curious as to why they are borrowing money at this time I, if, I mean well are the contractors demanding payment number one uh, recognizing the situation with the state which is is a problem number two and I don't want to, and, and Vin might be able to answer this better than I can. I mean, is there a way for the town, if we have the funds, to advance funds to be used for payment, or is that going to cause commingling of operating? And yep. we don't want to do that if that's not legal. But, you know, it seems ridiculous that the AM's got to borrow money at this point. Well, the problem is, it comes from the fact that they're a regional school system, they're separate from all of us. Yep and their state grant money and building money and all like the town of orange gets money uh, as reimbursement they're their whole own city to themselves and so that money goes to them from the state and they're not concerned about it i mean they're doing it and they don't seem to be terribly concerned about it but uh uh what i would say is uh, for you you can get an answer to that easier than me you know who the project manager company was on that ask john um, but uh, I don't think it's like a demand thing. I think they're clearing up their obligations, and uh, they know it's forthcoming. Certain parts have money, and certain parts don't. I talked to uh, Dave Steiger the other day from the uh, uh, land preservation area, and they have money that was previously approved, and uh, a little bit beyond that, they have about $7 million they're sitting with right now that we're in actually in contention for some of, uh, you know, uh, so you know some departments do have money yes sir if you haven't read the editorial in this morning paper go home and do that uh, tomorrow uh it addressed the question i think i think it was new haven had to go out and borrow fifty thousand uh, dollars for school 
to pay the contractors off. So that that is it's a major. Be more than fifty. Well, it's no one, well, there was one town. It mentions. It mentions. No, there was one fifty thousand. I forget who it was yeah. now. Uh, but anyway, uh, th that's the problem up in, uh, with, with the, uh, yeah, the the money. They, they rely. Like, they, they rely on that reimbursement. That's money right. So the suggestion money. suggestion by the register was they while they're going to argue back and forth, they should just set up a, a different method of at least paying for the school obligations. Yeah, that, what they did was right. they, they truly spent more than they had. They had their bonded money, but they also spent the reimbursement money as part of the project, and that's sometimes where you end up in these little uh, jam-ups because now all of a sudden it's not there. Okay, um, pension, selectman, nastry, I think I have to move again. There's only two slides. You can pull that screen down. Oh, I'm sorry. Turn around and use your back. <laughs> <laughs> We're on camera, Mitchell. <laughs> if I give you the chair, you can stand here and you can do it. I'll go over there. I wanted to uh, give the board an overview of the situation with the, uh, with the pension fund. Uh, Milliman is the uh, actuarial uh, company that we hired in beginning in January and fiduciary advisors the uh, investment company and there's a slide that uh, that's the pension board members uh, Eric Henlon is doing a great job as chairman of this uh, board and uh, uh, they put in a lot of work to to get the new suppliers and to uh, uh, also uh, monitor the fund this is a chart which uh, Milliman calls their uh, their toilet tank fund <laughs> chart. <laughs> it shows the inflow of money into the pension fund. The pension fund is uh, the uh, the tank. This won't work. I got to use this one. The, the tank here. That tank is the. Uh, money invested it's 25 million dollars it breaks and this chart covers both funds the police and the uh, and the town fund we add them together because the uh, the portfolio is the same for each one but it breaks down to uh, 10 million dollars for the town fund and 15 million dollars for the police fund the contributions that the employees make the 56k is for the town the 98 from the uh, police and the same thing uh, uh, up here but that figure these two figures here for the town and the police fund are calculated by the actuarial firm up here is the amount of money that's in this fund is invested and Milliman is using a six and a half percent return it's a little on the conservative side and fiduciary investment are the people that invest that money and uh, come up with the portfolio and then report on it at every meeting the uh, bottom is the money that goes to the pensioners, and there's also money required to fund the, um, the unfunded liability. And the unfunded liability, the, the town fund is 93% funded, the police fund is 73% funded, uh, and uh, that, that money to build up those funds uh, to amortize the unfunded liability is calculated by Milliman, and that's where these two numbers come from. They say the town needs to contribute $137,000 here for the, uh, for the town side and $554,000 for the uh, police side. So that's a calculation based on the work of the actuary. And so our interest is in making sure that this money is properly invested and that the uh, we track it on a, a on a quarterly basis and if there are any changes required uh, then we get that recommendation but that whole process is is also monitored by by the actuary fund uh, company because their their assumptions are based on the a, a guesstimate of the employees that are going to retire and what this outflow is and uh, and then they come up with a calculation as to what the input is right here to, su to sustain that. And that's a sizable amount of, of money that has to uh, go in to sustain that program. This program is closed to new employees uh, and eventually it will uh, disappear over a number of years. 
So at the meeting, at the meeting we had, uh, are there any questions on that? Does that include employees represented by union for the Board of Education? I know the teachers are in a, re a teacher's retirement pension, but how about the Yeah, this is just a... You just said police and... Uh, police and town. And town. Whichever, whichever yes. employees are included in the town. And that would be, say, Custodial. maintenance, maintenance yes. people within right. the Board of yeah. Education. Right. <coughs> right. Tony, before you leave that, the um, left-hand side where you show the 137,000 and the 554,000, that's what we're contributing. Is that, it's just a question, I don't know the answer to it, is that the, how much is being recommended by Milliman or is that how much, I mean that's how much we're actually putting in. That's the but, budget. Okay, that's the budget. And it but, came from Milliman. But is Milliman recommending, or at least next year recommending we put in more to get the because you mentioned that we're 90, I think you said 93% funded on the town side, 73% 73% on the on right. the police side. Should they be recommending more to get us up to 100% or is our goal not to get to 100%? It's our goal was to get back up there. It's going to depend on our experience. Uh, uh, it, could, it could be increased because what they're saying is there may be $3.8 million worth of unfunded liability, but that isn't needed today. That's needed over a period of years. So what they're coming up with is a number here and here that will amortize that unfunded liability over the period of time that they figure they have uh, based on the number of people that would be uh, w working and retiring. And so we depend on them to make that calculation. And, uh, and that's why you pay your actuaries to keep you honest that way. Uh, if it starts looking like the uh, the draw down here, the, the amount to pensioners is is higher than what this can feed, and 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 the employee contributions can feed. Then the jeopardy is that this the the 137 and the uh, and the 554 would have to be increased. So that's. But they made that decision. That, that, right. I mean, occasionally you read in the paper where all of a sudden the pension fund for a municipal employees is in trouble. Uh, yeah. because it's they, there's not enough in there to fund it yeah. so are you telling me that it's the actuaries that are advising us with a guesswork of how many people are going to go into pension to determine how much money has to I, go into I, the I, bank i guess they would almost agree that it's guesswork but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah they make that assessment based on uh, a lot of data and that's that's really what you uh, it's a complicated process uh and the only way we could judge is to see what their performance is but they they seem to be very, very qualified and very competent now. And uh, I think that uh, it seems to be in pretty good hands. And you said, Tony, that the, you thought the six and a half might be uh, a yeah, little the, bit uh, we did seven. We did 7% the first quarter. Yeah. And uh, Milliman was using 6.75 now, then. But since with the stock market problems and everything going on, Milliman, uh, fiduciary said, well, maybe 6.75. And Milliman said, well, to be conservative, we'll, uh, we'll make it six and a half. And that's the assessment they made. And that decision was made at that meeting. So that would help on the other end uh, yeah, anyway. That would help the, on the other end, yeah. yeah. Close your gap. Now, the only thing that the uh, investment company recommended, they, they said the por portfolio allocations are still good that they don't make recommend any changes at that time. We spent a lot of time discussing uh, the real estate uh, investment trusts or uh, REITs, and the only change they said, well, instead of just having a domestic fund, uh, let's change it to a global fund. And, uh, and that gave us more protection. It wasn't a significant change. It's only 1.6% of the portfolio. But we, the board went along with that, and we made that motion to, to go to a global form fund uh, by the same company. So, and the motion was made and passed. And that's the overview on the pension situation. Okay. Capital planning. Selectman Oakenquest. Okay. Um, met with the Board of Finance last month, made a uh, short presentation on where the projects are, both last year's and uh, the uh, FY0708. And the 08 uh, 
projects have all been approved by the Board of Finance, except for the uh, redesign of the South Wing at High Plains, and that's uh, that's still up for some discussion. And that was only twenty-five thousand out of the four hundred ten thousand. So the other projects have all all been approved, and all except one are already in the uh, active stage, uh, including Joe's. Um, there will be a letter going out to uh, all of the uh, direct town directors um, and organizations uh, looking for input for uh, the next uh, fiscal year planning for uh, 08 09. And that should be going out within probably the next couple of weeks for the, for the uh, budget cycle. Okay. Personnel Selectman's Goldblatt and Oak and Quiston. Yours truly. I don't think we have a report. We didn't meet this month, so no report. We've had a clear clear sale on this month. So is there uh, there's a bunch of FYIs there for you. If any of you have any questions on any of those, I don't know if you reviewed them. Yeah. The uh, the solar one is a very extensive report. Our, uh, are we going to discuss that at some point? or That's why it says right on there, sir, to be discussed at the October meeting. Uh, well, we will be uh, reviewing it at that meeting. Will the, uh, That's why we gave it to will the company Will the company be there? Because I would suggest they have yeah. a, sort of an executive summary. That, uh, We're going to invite uh, Mr. Peasy to be here. But I also gave it to you this month. He gave them to us, and uh, I wanted all of you to be able to read it and think about it and you know give it some thought and some communities are going for this and some communities are not going for this but um, I think it you know at least deserves our careful consideration so I didn't want you to get it on this past Friday or Saturday and have to be able to uh, jump on it right away to uh, you know make your decision so I figure this way you have it and we're not giving you another copy so make sure you save that where you can uh, bring it next month there will be no copy of it in your packet next month there's too much paper are, um, are the rates for the electricity that he's got in here they've been are they real rates or, or is uh, there yeah he went by he extracted from our current bills oh okay so he did come in and, and get that information yes he did okay thank you yeah they may be subject to change I mean we've all seen how the uh, electric is going but he he extracted for extract well, I think any any of us who received an electric bill knows <laughs> you know what's been happening I mean I I put in fluorescent lights throughout my whole house and I reduced consumption by by 15 uh, percent and my bill doubled <laughs> 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 so yeah. so solar what I'm saying is that solar becomes a better option as electricity costs Absolutely. Go, goes up. The question and, uh, is down the road. Well, we can have this discussion next month. But the question is to consider, by the time we do this project and all, do you think the legislature is going to do anything as far as who gets to own uh, the generation side of it? Remember, at this point, UI, you're only paying for transmission. Uh, we, being the town, we bought our generation uh, in a bid with uh, CCM, Connecticut Conference of Municipalities, and that's a good buy at the moment, but. Five years from now, that can be, uh, you know, an off number, or it might be a home run. We don't, you know, we don't know. Um, you know, there's a lot of variables, but at the current situation, you know, it's worth looking into. Well, the cost of solar won't go up once you get it in, yeah. <laughs> unless the sun global turns warming, up. It's actually I was uh, going to say that the global, global warming, warming the cost is decreasing. Costs. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there's a bunch of stuff there. If uh, nobody wants to. Uh, any questions there? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Okay. All those in favor, we will be adjourning at 1090.